Welcome back for another Real Talk. I'm your host, Mike Najeri. I don't usually start videos that way, but it felt natural. Today I wanted to talk to you about insecurity. It's something that we all feel from time to time. Others feel it a lot more than some. I think it's important that we understand where insecurities are on a spectrum because insecurity is basically, um, well, you think of it as the opposite of arrogance, right? Arrogant people, they, they tell you about how great they are. Insecure people are really not feeling that great about themselves, but it's almost like it's two sides of the same coin. Arrogance really is disguising insecurity. Some people just pretend that they are confident, and that's why it comes across as arrogant. But if you look at it that way, that if insecurity is on this side and arrogance is on this side, what we're both really hoping to strive for is that true confidence in the middle. That's what we're looking for, confidence. And in that confidence, it's important that you understand that to be fully confident, you're not going to be putting others down as you would be if you were arrogant or putting yourself down if you are insecure. You have to find that inner light, for lack of a better word. When I look at the comments on my videos, because I've been doing these for several years now, uh, you know, I think the majority of people that watch them like them. I mean, why continue to watch somebody that you don't enjoy? Uh, but there are people that will put comments in there saying, why are you, you know, you're not Jackie Gleason, you're not funny, stop doing this, stop doing that. They're directing me, they're telling me how I should do my videos. And there's always that feeling of like, well, are they right? That's my insecurities kicking in. But at the end of the day, I continue to do what I do because I, I feel like that's me, that's, that's, that's who I am. I, I am somebody that goes on YouTube, I follow people, and I follow people because they're real, they're, or at least they're projecting themselves real enough that I believe it, right? And I think and I feel connected to them because I relate to them, they're relatable. And so if I come up here and do something that's not me, not genuinely me, it's gonna come across in a video. And so when I come up here and I talk to you guys, you might not like it and that's okay, you don't have to watch the videos. But for those of you that watch it, I think it's important that you know that this is my personality. I am goofy, I like to make jokes, uh, I, you know, have my own shtick, right? Uh, and of course, I'm kind of toning it down for this video a little bit because it is something that is a serious subject to some degree. When I think about my confidence and where that comes from when it comes to my art, now I'm talking about all my art, my art in terms of what I put on paper, my art coming up here as an entertainer and an educator. Uh, I go back to the Andy Kaufman philosophy. Now, I thought this was beautifully highlighted in the 1999 film Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey. You get a very good understanding that Andy Kaufman's humor is not based on the reaction of others. He's looking to make himself laugh first, and if other people laugh along the way, so be it. He just wants to make himself laugh, and that comes across very well in the movie. Now, some people might feel a little bad about having confidence. I know that sounds strange, but people might feel like they don't deserve to feel confident. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say that you needed surgery. Right? You, you, you needed surgery, uh, it doesn't matter what, heart surgery, uh, knee transplant, it doesn't matter. Do you want to see a surgeon who, when you ask about the procedure, they're like, well, uh, I've, I've done it before, um, you replace the knee and, you know, you do this and, and that, and I'm very capable of doing it. Or do you want a surgeon that's going to come in there and be like, oh, this is nothing, you're going to be fine, it's going to be a few weeks of recovery, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to fix the knee, you'll be like new before you know it, and you'll be out of pain. I don't find that arrogant, I don't find that insecure, I find that the truest form of confidence in a comforting way. You don't want a surgeon that's going to be capable, you want a surgeon that's going to be confident. So it's okay to be confident, it's okay to have that. And if you are giving your all into your art, there's no reason you shouldn't be confident. Even if you don't think where it, sh you know, it should be. I think that every really successful person, to some degree, always feels like they can be doing better. Even that surgeon that went in there and said, I'm going to fix your knee like new, I think that they can keep that confidence and their success record because they're always looking to improve. They go to the conferences, they look at new science that comes out, they try to find ways to make themselves better. And knowing that in the back of their head, I think helps them project that confidence, which is so important. Now when it comes to your art, art at the end of the day, it's an attitude. It's the attitude you have about it. And you have to be confident that what you did is good. Now, what do I mean by that, art is an attitude? Well, if you think about it, now there's been times that you've gone into a museum and if you haven't said it out loud, you've at least said it in your head, 
Well, I could have done that, right? I mean, I know that I've thought it a couple of times, but the point is I didn't. Somebody else had the confidence to put something out there that I don't want to call is subpar. That's not what I mean at all. They had the confidence to say, no, I like this. I'm putting it out there. They were the first to do it, and they're on display. And I realized that they're in a museum and I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, that, that is important. That there's, there's some kind of lesson within that about the confidence and the attitude you have to, towards your art. And like my humor, is your art good enough for you? It has to be good enough for you before it will ever be good enough for anybody else. That confidence has to come from within. You have to be satisfied with your art without validation from others in order to achieve that real confidence. Now it's great to get feedback, uh, critiques, take everything with a grain of salt. Just like those negative comments I get, I do get positive comments. And I try to take those negative comments, put them into context, compartmentalize them and say, okay, well, are there places where there's actually good advice being given, or is it just somebody that's on the internet trolling? Because let's face it, that's just the reality of the world we live in today. Now, I'm gonna not call somebody out by name, but there's somebody I know, I might be related to them. They are extremely loudly dressed, okay? They dress loud. Everybody here is smiling because they knew who I'm talking about. They dress colorful, flamboyant. There are many different words you can use. Um, loud. And it attracts attention. And some would say negative attention. Others would say positive attention. At the end of the day, it does not matter, though, because this individual likes the way they look. In their opinion, in their mind's eye, this projects who they are as a person. And it does not matter to them at all what you think. Because this is, this is what they do. This is the, the jewelry they wear, uh, the shirts they wear, all of it is part of who they are. And they don't apologize for it, nor should they. Is it something that I would do myself? No. But I think that there's a lesson in that confidence that they have and that this is what I think is good for me. It's interesting. Is it a form of... Um, ignorance is bliss, or is it truly confidence? Uh, I've known this person a very long time, obviously, if I might be related to them. Uh, and I think it could be not necessarily ignorance, but just sort of, I don't care what you think, this is me. And that's okay. You should never have to apologize for feeling how you feel and being who you are. Unless you're then you should be apologizing, right? Yeah. They are being their genuine self, and it projects a form of confidence. Whether or not we think it looks ridiculous or it looks fantastic, that assurance they have in themselves projects confidence in themselves. And that's an interesting thing in there. So, so what's something that we can do? I mean, if you, it, it's not something you can just kind of like turn a switch on and stuff. I think that the biggest thing that artists um, that are especially starting out sort of struggle with, with that insecurity, is in the marks, okay? It's important that every mark you make, whether it's with a brush, a pencil, God forbid a pastel, I don't like them, but that's just my opinion, uh, because I don't like being dirty because of my obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, every mark you make needs to come from a place of confidence. Take a deep breath, and then you're gonna go and you're gonna make that mark, that one mark. And if you're hesitant, if you're tentative, if you have this inkling of like, oh, I don't know, it's going to show up in the mark. It really will. A few, uh, I guess at this point, maybe years ago, I posted a video with a piece of artwork that I said that I bought. And I said, look at the confident marks. And then I revealed that it was actually done by my, at the time, two or three year old daughter. The point is, is that that two or three year old, there is no hesitation. They are not concerned about anything but the marks they're making. And it shows, it shows at that young age that that is a confident, bold mark. And there's no hesitation, there's no little, okay, you know, you can see it. So if you are struggling with making those confident marks, then start small, start swatching your paints out again. Go back to something that brings you comfort, okay? Brings you back to that safe space because we grow when we're not feeling safe. So before we're willing to take that step to the, we're gonna be strong, we're gonna be brave, sometimes it helps to kind of reel it in and go back to something familiar. You don't have to just you know jump into the deep end, but 
find a way to get yourself comfortable, calm. You don't want to be doing art necessarily when you're shot out of a cannon. You don't want to do anything necessarily when you're feeling really, really high or really, really low. The saying is, don't make promises when you're happy, don't make decisions when you're angry. So with that being said, you're looking for that plateau, that state of zen, that calm. And sometimes getting yourself into that state is going back to those old things of, you know, warm-up exercises, swatching, um, doing something that you're familiar with. And then when you're in that state of calm, you take a deep breath and you go ahead and you try your best to give those bold, strong marks with confidence in your movement, okay? And understand that if it looks good to you, it doesn't matter what it looks like to anybody else. It has to look good to you first. Just like those clothing uh, items that that person I was telling you about wear, it's important that you understand it's about you first. These videos that I make, it needs to be about me, a real me. Like I said earlier, I follow YouTubers when I feel it's genuinely them. I feel connected with them. So if you don't feel connected with your own artwork, how are other people going to feel connected to it or to you as an artist? Because sometimes people buy artwork not just because they like the way it looks, but they want to feel connected to the artist that made it. They want to be part of that story, part of that history. And you have to have that confidence to feel like you're worthy of it. And you are. If you've given it your all and you push and you strive to succeed, as long as you believe it, it's true. It's really there. You should feel confident. It might not be something that comes naturally to you. In fact, I don't think it comes naturally to many people. Uh, some people, once they put in their 10,000 hours, it happens, but there's no reason it shouldn't happen before that if you're conscientious of it. You deserve to feel confident. You deserve to feel comfortable. You deserve to be okay in your own skin. And that is basically the start of it. So these insecurities we feel as artists are natural. You are not alone. And also in that understanding that you're not alone, it helps, at least for me, brings me comfort. Knowing I'm not the first to walk in these shoes and I won't be the last. And if I can overcome it, and if I can help other people overcome it, all the better. So when I say these little comfort things you can do to help get yourself to that plateau where you're not uh, super happy, super sad, you're just in that kind of state of zen, like I said, swatch your paints, do something that brings you comfort, doodle, go to that like throwaway journal that we talked about in some of the earlier videos and if you uh, haven't seen that maybe maybe we'll link to that at the end of this, uh, the throwaway journal which is a video I did a very long time ago but I've mentioned it in more recent videos. Um, I never know how many people that are watching are just joining us for the first time or have been watching all along so want to make sure that you have a way to get to that if you want to. So if this is helpful to you, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to be notified when we place new videos. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram at MikeNotJerry, where I will continue to try to post things to help motivate and give you confidence in your art.